Hey guys, Carlzor here. Recently a YouTube user sent me a message about this little thing called the powder toy. So I'm going to show it off in a video because I think it's pretty awesome. Especially if you like stuff like the um, Den Ball powder game that I showed a while back. Um, OE Cake, or however you pronounce that game. And all kinds of stuff like that. Um, physics and fluids and powders and different materials that interact in different ways. And this has so many more different materials and stuff than I ever thought possible. It simulates on such a deep and awesome level, too. Um, all the way down to, like, uh, different kinds of walls that allow different things through. Like, this one just allows airflow through. This one allows everything. This one allows powders but blocks liquids and gases, so on and so forth. This one right here even turns on and off the wall based on whether electricity is running through it or not. And the electronics is a whole can of worms in itself. There's some pretty crazy stuff that you can rig up with the uh, electronic systems. But I'm going to go ahead and get right into just messing around with some basic stuff. I'm going to make a little, um, a little bowl to mess around in with. Now, I've only been playing with this for a couple days, so I'm not going to pretend like I know how to do everything in this, but I, I'm figuring it out. It's pretty awesome, too. Uh, what kind of weird display mode is it set to if that's happening? Anyway, not going to worry about it. Let's see here. Maybe it's just doing something weird because I'm recording with it. Um, so, you can scroll the mouse wheel to make a bigger or smaller brush. You can even hold shift and scroll the mouse wheel to do that, or control and scroll the mouse wheel to do that. It's all pretty awesome. Uh, can make some water and oh, dump some lava into it. I noticed that Nerd Cubed also recently added this in uh, one of his f uh, three free game Friday things, and he kind of started off by doing the same thing. The reason I'm doing this, though, is because there's actually something quite awesome you can do in this. You'll notice there's different display modes that I can use by selecting the uh, different number keys and stuff. Now, this one's called Heat Display, and it just kind of shows how hot stuff is. But that's only one side of the coin, because there's also this feature called Ambient Heat that's been added in. If you have Ambient Heat turned on, the air shows heat levels, as well as uh, materials themselves. So if I light a fire, it's actually going to heat up the air as well, rather than uh, just the uh, materials on the screen. See, I'm heating up the, ha the air over here, and eventually it'll all wick away, it'll go off screen, it'll cool down, or whatever. The awesome thing about ambient heat, though, is that it allows materials that are on the screen to eventually cool down. Um, as far as electronics goes, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with the electronics in this game. But uh, some of the cooler things are uh, these electrodes that you can make. You want to keep these pretty small, otherwise they just go crazy. The developers actually recommend that you use one pixel, otherwise they completely malfunction and go bananas, but I think it's pretty cool to uh, mess with large ones. So you spark them, and since I used a, one that's bigger than one pixel, it's just going to keep on creating this uh, plasma arc. You can see how much heat it's creating. Um, this makes a really good burner for if you're trying to melt stuff or whatever. Um, you can make an oven out of this. You can even, even take something that's indestructible, like diamond, and make like a, a a box around this. And uh yeah, see how much heat that's producing? That's what the that's what the like fancy display looks like. That's what like the normal default graphics looks like. That's what it looks like when it's actually showing how much heat I have on the screen. Now that heat is still there. You see ambient heat's still turned on. I just have it in a mode where you can't see it. Um what happens if I put, like, just some iron up here? Oh, yeah, look. If I put iron over here, it's normal. If I put it over here in this hot area, it starts melting almost instantly. You can actually see it heating up. And then it'll start to melt, like, right around here. Yep, look at that. 
So you can do the stuff like that, and if you let that collect someplace where it'll cool down, then, uh, like for example, if I just, oops, deleted all that, ah, uh, well, most of that's going to escape, but you see, it eventually cools down and rehardens. Now, if you get it up to a hot enough temperature and get into, like, thousands of degrees, it can take a while to cool down, but since this game has an awesome heat simulation model, you could do something clever like, uh, I was making heat sinks out of diamonds, basically, something like that, and then, uh, something like this, and making kind of a heat sink, and then blowing liquid nitrogen into it um, by making clone... Oops, didn't mean to do that. Clone... No, don't, don't clone the diamonds. That's not what I meant to do. clone, and, uh, yeah, I should have put this facing the other way, but I can fix it. I can, uh, I can do something that'll make it still work. Put liquid nitrogen on it so that the clone starts producing liquid nitrogen, and, uh, you can see in the heat display how much cold that produces. Um, now if I go to walls, and I make this one that looks like fan fan, um, the fan one actually confused me at first, um, but I read how to do it. Create a fan, then you leave the fan selected, hold shift, click, and push in a direction, and it starts blowing the air in the direction that you drew the line. And so, even if you really, really heat up this diamond by, say, pouring a whole bunch of lava on it, the liquid nitrogen will get up in there and cool it down pretty quickly. Not instantly, it takes some time, but cools it down a lot more quickly than the diamond will cool down on its own. And see, the lava has already hardened into uh, stone. In fact, it's hardening, it's so cool up here that it's actually hardening almost before it touches the rest of the stone there. And anyway, um, there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do with this. This is a a uh, d very destructive bomb that blows stuff up. Probably another one of those things that's recommended that you just use like one at a time. Um, the electronics in this are ridiculously complicated. Uh, let's see, you could make... here I better start a new thing. I usually just use metal, but if you use more than just like the plain metal, you can do more complicated stuff because it won't, you know, you can use like insulated wires so they don't interfere with each other or whatever. But like a basic thing that you could do is uh, put down some metal. If you spark it, you can see the electricity travels through it. And in fact, you can put a battery on the end and it'll create a continuous stream of electricity to go through it. Oops meant to delete that. Now, uh, let's say you don't... oh, and you see how the electricity actually heats up the metal. Now anyway, let's say you don't always want the current to travel. You can make a thing called a switch, which actually takes a little bit of learning, you know, how to use. It's one of those things I kind of had to look up to know how to use it correctly. Make more metal coming out the other side, and you'll notice that if I spark this metal, the current stops at the switch. But if you use this uh, PSCN stuff and NSCN, and you can make this look a lot neater when you're doing it. Um, okay, so I spark this. Nothing happens. Now something happens. The switch is turned on because I sparked this. Now if I spark this, it turns the switch back off again. So now nothing happens. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, I just kind of glitched it out. Eh. <laughs> By uh, activating the switch and sending a current through it at the same time, I think I kind of spazzed it out. Anyway, um, yeah, and even if you attached a battery on this end or whatever, it can keep on sending current into the switch, but the switch won't actually do anything unless it gets turned on. Oops. Um... Now, one of the cool things you can do with switches, all these walls do different things. Um, some of them let different materials through or whatever. This one becomes a transparent wall whenever uh, current is applied to it. So, you can have it 
you know, holding a stack of uh, concrete. And it's a solid wall. It won't go through. But if I send a current into it, so let's just say there was something attached to it, like that, and I spark it, it becomes transparent. As soon as the current stops, it becomes solid again. Um, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in this, like uh, you can play with like photons and neutrons and electrons and um, singularities, exotic matter, vibranium, which is actually one of my favorites, uh, favorite things to mess with. I keep on hitting the wrong button. Um, what this basically does, you uh, want to subject it to some kind of energy. So I usually use, uh, what was it? Was I using neutrons? Was this working? Or photons? I can't remember. Maybe I can trick it. Maybe I can uh, make a couple of electrodes and spark them. And that'll create the necessary energy. Yeah, that's doing it. That's doing it. Once it charges up enough, it's going to create this huge explosion. Watch it go, watch it go. It's about to happen. Kaboom! The most sparkly explosion in the world. And yeah, the uh, <laughs> little electrodes were still going. Anyway, make some wood, put some lava on it, watch it burn. And uh, there's like a gazillion things that you can do in this game. You can play around with the air. As you can see, there's pressure. Anywhere you hold your mouse, it shows the current amount of pressure. I think there's even a, well, there's a velocity display. There's a pressure display that shows high pressure zones, medium pressure zones. Blue is low pressure zones. Um, and it's not relative like it is in some of these. There's actually, like, you can have different containers with different amounts of pressure in them. And um, it's all very fun to mess with. I recommend trying it out. It's free. There's a link in the description. Go get the beta version of it because it's newer and it's awesome and I recommend that you try it. Anyway, thanks for watching.